What's up, everybody? So welcome back to another episode of Swift Podcast. So with pleasure today, I bring on a very good friend of mine. Um, she is a teacher. She is a trainer. She is a fitness advocate. She is much more than that. A great cook. Um, I can go down the countless list of stuff. So Jess, welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm doing good. You're making me blush over here. I'm like, <laughs> we're going to have a lot of those moments. So, um, yeah, so talk to me. How's everything going? How's school going? How's teaching? Um, fitness? Everything's good. I mean, crazy times right now. So I've just been adapting. Um, every day is like an adjustment. This whole year has just been like flexibility would probably be like the biggest thing. You know, I coach soccer. Um, I teach high school. I teach group exercise classes. And I've had to learn to like adapt and become flexible with all of it and just kind of, you know, go with the flow every day is like something new. So it's been a learning process and um, yeah, I'm just enjoying the process, trying not to stress what I can't control. <laughs> Awesome. Good for you. So um, viewers, right then and there, within the first like minute, Jess has already taught you a lesson. And part of the reason why we do this stuff is for the lessons for you guys. So she just talked about flexibility and she just went down a list of like six things that she does. So tell them in terms of that flexibility and time management, not stressing out over, right? I feel like you, you're very composed, very calm all the time. I, every time we speak, it's just like, wow, she's very calm. She's always happy. There's a smile on your face. So how do you do it? What's your secret for them? Um, I mean, well, honestly, that's just me as a person. I'm always happy. I'm a very like, you know, mellow person. Um, it takes a lot for me to get, you know, angry, um, but, Honestly, I just try to, like I said before, I just try to think like, don't stress if you can't control it. That's my biggest thing. Um, you know, like I said, there's, there's so many things that I never thought I would do and that I've been doing and like, just kind of getting out of your comfort zone and facing those challenges um, and trying different things to build you as a person and you just become better with things over time. Like when I, I remember I first started um, teaching group exercise classes at Powerhouse and like, I was having the worst anxiety. I was like, I can't do this. You know, like I teach in front of kids now for me to teach in front of adults or, you know, it's intimidating. Um, but once I started doing it, I'm like, I love this. And um, same thing with coaching. You know, I was asked to coach multiple sports that I'm not familiar with. You know, I, I coach soccer, which I've played, but I coach tennis. Um, I'm coaching swimming. I start that this week, which I, you know, I've never done these things. And um, just having positive people around me always like kind of bring me up telling me I can do it. Um, and you know, it, you'll never know if you don't try. So, you know, if I try it and I don't like it, then I know, but for the most part, everything I've tried and put my mind to, I've overcome. Um, so that's pretty much what, that's pretty much how I do it. I just, you know, I take that leap of faith and just say, you know, I'm going to try it. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But so far I've been good. I've been successful with everything. So <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Really? What really well said and I acknowledge that you, you you said one thing pretty on is if you can't control it don't stress about it and I think with the pandemic and everything going on there's a lot of things that we we can't control so we we develop and we went through this way where Jess went from teaching live classes at Powerhouse and our gym shut down so now you're doing Zoom classes and you adapted very quickly and you're doing a very great job on those classes and I've seen that and I've seen a lot of people take those classes and if you haven't taken them highly recommend it. I steal her workouts all the time because I'm lazy like that and they're great great resources um, and I love that and I know in, your, in the questionnaire you found that is having positive impact on other people makes you the happiest and I feel like you did a great job of that in the last couple of months. You're making a positive impact on the community. And I feel like the community has uplifted you, correct? What do you think? Yeah, definitely. Um, just that the energy and what I get in return from what I do is what keeps me going. Um, I wasn't, you know, I knew I had to do something once the gym shut down and cause that, that, that's my passion, you know, teaching, I love it. So um, I adapted real quick. Um, I started the Zoom classes up and, you know, I started out with like five people. And then, you know, last month I had like 34 people sign up for the month and um, just realizing, you know, people texting me constantly like, oh, I lost, you know, 10 pounds here or there. And uh, just me seeing other people's results from my, me doing what I love is like the best feeling in the world. <laughs> That's awesome. So I'm going to put you right on the last with that is <laughs> other people's fitness journeys so talk to us about your fitness journey what really got you going and i've known jess for a while but i think the jess i'm seeing in front of me today is at like 
peak performance Jess, and she's on top of everything she's been doing. Um, so talk to us about your fitness journey. Yeah, so I mean, I've always been into fitness. Um, I've always been, I think since like 10th grade in high school, I knew I wanted to be a phys ed teacher. I wanted to coach soccer. So I've always been into it in that aspect. Um, so when I went away to school though, I did kind of fall a little behind. I got off the grid. I lost, I mean, I gained a lot of weight. Um, and I just remember like my sophomore, junior year, just being super unhappy with like how I look. And, you know, I was taking all these like classes at school for, you know, nutrition and things like that. And I really wanted to like, just kind of level up and practice what I preach. You know, I was thinking like, I'm about to be a physical educator, um, a health teacher. So like, I need to, you know, really, really get into it. And uh, a lot of the classes that I took at King inspired me to just, you know, learn more about nutrition, really, you know, the exercise science and all that, just to kind of really get into more strength training. Um, and like I said, I was just super unhappy with how I looked. And I just felt very like, insecure and for me like I think that's the worst feeling in the world is like not being happy with how you look and like being in a bathing suit just like feeling uncomfortable in your skin um so I knew I needed to change um so I started gradually lifting um and then you know once you start seeing results I mean that's like addicting once you start seeing results and you know like what you're doing is working you just want to like work harder and you know kind of not look back after that and that's kind of what happened for me um like towards the end of college I really got into it and then um you know this whole journey is about like learning I'm still learning I don't know everything I don't try to act like I know everything um there's something you know even with you like I always ask you like oh this hurts what is this like um even with my clients you know I don't try to act like I know everything I'm I'm learning from others constantly I think your fitness journey is about constantly learning so well, that was beautifully said uh, and bravo to you like I again I, I, I've seen a lot of growth in you in the last couple of years um, from when we worked at the performance spine at the desk to where you are today and it's amazing to see and I agree with you the level of education is a key component um, and viewers from our previous episode we talked about women lifting being a great thing for them and here is another example for you from someone who I know for a fact lives heavier than a lot of men in the gyms and pushes herself to extreme levels and the benefits you have. There's still a smile on her face. She's happy with how she looks. And I think that's the best lesson you can ever give someone is enjoying that journey and continuously learning about that journey because you run into that. You run into those, oh, I know everything, so don't tell me anything right and, and it's a constant feedback all right then keep doing your thing but then when you get stuck they'll always come back um i had a guy a couple of months ago and literally read me out as an educator and as a therapist saying you know what i don't think you know we're talking about. i'm like that's fine the door's right there sir i don't need this and he left and then three months later he comes back and it's the, the open-mindedness right it comes down to just being open about it with yourself and being honest with it to yourself of knowing that you know what i still have a lot more to go i'm still learning myself included i'm still in school i'm still pursuing those things um and then in your fitness journey i know recently we went from strength training to hit training of those two which one's your biggest passion what would you say definitely the hit training you know i'm a hit hit queen um you know i always love strength training but i gotta throw in like the hit workouts at least a couple times a week that i feel the best when i complete a hit workout you know strength training yes i i feel great after it but there's no feeling you know that compares to just finishing a long or even short hit workout um just i feel like it gets you so sweaty and just feels so like you know i think they're so beneficial and you can you can customize them so much like you can modify the intensity modify the exercises not that you can't do that with lifting um i just think it's a different different feeling definitely when you complete a hit workout rather than you know versus just lifting you know i remember when you used to write those workouts on the board and i tried one i was like jess stop trying to kill me and that was the beauty of it is she i agree with her um you can modify them pretty quickly and i think you did a great job with that so Right now you're teaching multiple people at a time and on your live class and so forth. So as a coach, do you find it difficult to modify with them? If so, or what's your biggest challenge when it comes to those things? I think personally, I think, you know, I have, I have mothers that take my class, my own mom, she's 60, she takes my classes. And then I have some people who are like super fit and they take my class. So for me, it's not so much about, um, I, when I get on my Zoom classes, I'm not like, okay, here's the workout. This is what you're doing. I tell them, you know, this is what we're doing. If you don't like this, or if this feels uncomfortable, if this is too challenging, 
here's a modification or pick something that works for you. This is your workout and I'm just here to guide you. And you know, you can use me as a guide almost rather than, I don't wanna, you know, if someone hates doing um, push-ups, then, you know, don't do something you hate because you're not gonna enjoy it. And my main goal is for people to enjoy, you know, what they're doing. Um, not saying I enjoy doing push-ups, but just saying I, you know, I think if you're not enjoying it, and that's the same thing, I could go on about, you know, nutrition too, same thing. If you don't enjoy what you're eating, enjoy what you're, you know, how you're working out, um, then I don't think it's gonna be realistic and stick with you. Um, and that's like my main goal is just trying to like find other people's passion in, you know, through my passion. So, so yeah, I show, I show modifications for everything. Um, I show harder versions and show easier versions. And I even tell people, you know, I'm like, do the push-ups on your knees, you know, don't, you know, lose the pride and, you know, just do what works right and feels good for your body. Um, and the results will come, you know. So. That's, that's awesome. And I, I like what you said about I'm your guidance to your workout, right? And most trainers and most coaches forget that our job is to coach at times, right? We get so worked up in teaching. I know when I used to teach group exercise classes, I never did the exercise with them. I was like, my job isn't to work out with you. My job is to make sure that you guys are doing this correctly and I can tell you how to change it. And I'd always get shunned for that, right? And then I know part of your classes, you do work out with them and you do a great job of cueing and so forth. I'm just not gifted like that. I just can't multitask like that. So bravo to you. But you still acknowledge the fact that we still have to coach. We still have to modify based off of that because it can be intimidating for people. Even though a lot of stuff right now we're doing is virtual, people can still be afraid to do it. So how do you as a coach bring them back to earth and say, you know what, this is what we'll do. So that's a big kudos to you on doing it that way. Um, have you found that in the last couple of months, the transition from when you first started to where you are today has definitely helped you grow as a professional? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, the Zoom, the Zoom world has just like opened up this whole like virtual, you know, COVID alone just opened up so many virtual possibilities for me and just kind of, you know, um, now I'm kind of like into creating a website, making my ebook. I actually have an ebook already. I just need to kind of do the next step on it. But like this whole virtual world and just realizing like I can help so many more people um, from all over like online, um, which is something I never even thought about before COVID, you know. Um, I was just a powerhouse doing what I love, you know, teaching for the high school is like my main job, but you know, I found passion in helping others aside from just my students. And the fact that I can do, you know, all of that um, virtually is just, you know, it's definitely been something that's helped me grow as an educator also. That's awesome, good, great, wow. So I will say one thing, I think I agree with you, right? Your passion is driven by your results, but your passion to help others not only has enhanced you as a professional and as a person, but enhanced the people around you. I know when we talk and even in the gym, it's like, yeah, if I do this, she's watching, I'm going to do more. So I have to do more. And it's not to show her up, but it's like the energy you provide for the people is what we feed off of. And that's the whole process of it. It's a constant grind. The journey is very motivating. Um, but as we keep talking, you keep mentioning more things to me to add to your list. So let's talk for a second on work-life balance. I think you do a great job of work-life balance. Um, recently engaged, you guys are traveling, you're planning, and you have a wedding to plan as well. For the, and like, my mind just talking about the stuff you're doing is already exploding. So how's that? How's the process of work-life balance? And how do you find that work-life balance, especially now when, you know, you can work from home, you work out at home, so you're stuck in this confined area, but then you also have X to do and Y to do and so forth. So I mainly, you know, I've been, even since college, I've always had like three jobs and I've always came home on the weekends to work this job and that. So I'm just pretty much used to, you know, my work ethic has just been this way for a while. It's not something I woke up one day and was like, I want to work a million jobs. Um, but, you know, even my friends and my family, they're like, I don't know how you do it. You need a break. Um, and there are days where I do feel like, okay, I'm like drained, like I need a day off. Um, but then also at, you know, when COVID first happened and the shutdown happened, I was like, what am I, like, what do I do? Like, I, don't, I was like going crazy because I'm so used to doing so many things. And I think over time, I just, you know, was able to handle more and more, um, the better I got at things. Um, you know, my first year of teaching, at the high school was obviously like my biggest obstacle but then now once I'm I'm like into a routine and I'm I just put my priorities straight you know um 
I just make sure I get it done. And that's the main thing, like prioritizing what's important to you, um, especially like balancing like my own workouts, you know, I mean, coaching soccer and everything, like we go, I have to be at school at 730 in the morning. Um, we have practice right after school, three o'clock, five o'clock. I don't get home till sometimes six o'clock. And then by then I'm like, I need to go to the gym. And it's not really like, I don't look at it as like, oh, I have to work out. I kind of look at it as like, I get to work out. I'm lucky enough to, to be able to do this. You know, yes, I'm tired, but I just kind of suck it up. And I'm like, there's not a lot of people that are able to even work out. And I, I, um, I don't take anything for granted, I guess. I just, I feel like I'm very lucky that I'm in a position where I love what I do in every aspect of my life. And I just try to take advantage of every day, so. Work-life balance, basically find <laughs> what you love to do and do it and you'll be okay. I think it's a good- Exactly, it, where it doesn't feel like work. I remember there were days at Powerhouse where they're like, oh, pick up your check. I'm like, oh. I'm getting paid like I just I wasn't even like you know I'm not there for the paycheck same with school I'm not there for you know the money I'm there I could yeah I can be at other places doing other things making more money but for me it's about you know really loving what you do and if it doesn't feel like work then you know that's how you know you're in a good spot and this is it's funny right because a couple episodes we talked about loving what you do and it no longer becomes a chore. It no longer becomes a job. It's a career standpoint, but your passion drives it. And I talked about this plenty of times is your passion will always drive your success. She's passionate about teaching. She's passionate about fitness in general. She's passionate about helping others more than anything. And at no point out of Jess's mouth has she ever mentioned anything related to income or so forth. It's just, I'm passionate about this. I love doing this. And if someone looks at her schedule, I said, I was like, my mind would go crazy, but her passion drives that. And I think that's what we have to realize as human being is that we're really not limited to what we can do in life. And if there's something you're truly passionate about, go get it. There's really nothing stopping you, right? If you give a half-ass effort, you're not going to get the results you want. So, you know, I found that just by me giving my everything, um, it doesn't go overlooked by others around me. So... Absolutely. And you give your everything to your daily life. You don't feel like you're hitting a burnout because you enjoy everything you're doing. It's not like you're doing random things to do it. It's you're doing everything that it's what Jess is. This is Jess's life. And that's what I like to do. So congrats on finding that. Cause I feel like people are still struggling with that. It took me what, six years after school, high school, college, and six years plus to really get to that point. And you found it at an early age, but I feel like you could only excel from that point. Right. I mean, and it's okay how long it takes you to get there. The, the main thing is that you don't just settle where you're at. You know, if you know this isn't what you want to do and it's not making you happy and you don't have that, you know, passion, you know, you hate going to work every day, you're always looking forward to the weekends, um, you know, then you got to do something about it. And I know it's like so cliche to say like, you know, and people are thinking like, yeah, okay, sure. It's not that easy, but it really is. You know, it's really, you have to love what you do because you only live once and, you know, you have to, if you're not enjoying it, then for me, it's just not worth it, not worth my time or energy. Absolutely. And Jess made a very good point here where we always get that from people like, you know, it's not as easy as it says, or it's not as easy as it looks. It really can be as easy as that is as long as you have a plan, you have a structure layout and so forth. Like for example, our fitness journeys, if you don't have a plan for your fitness journey, you're not going anywhere. There's no, no tally for results. And then setting smaller goals to that point, right? Like, when you first started your classes or when you're starting your book, like I got to finish chapter one, I got to finish chapter two, or I need this many by this time. And you start to build that rapport. Then that long-term goal that doesn't seem attainable is pretty attainable, right? You just have that plan. I think it comes down to planning for your passion. If you really are passionate about being in the position you want to be, have you done enough to plan it? And right? set small, small realistic goals, you know, goes for fitness and life. You know, if you say you're going to do something, don't, you know, make sure it's realistic and measurable. And um, the main thing is, like I said, just realistic, you know, don't have this big idea like, oh, I want to do this. And, you know, I know I'll never do that, but just take small steps and like reach your goal and you'll get there. Like I know right now, I can definitely see myself like opening my own gym one day and just, you know, not being into teaching. Like, of course I love what I do, but I see teachers that have been at school for like 20 years and they're just not loving it anymore. And um, <laughs> I can see myself getting to the point where I want more and I want to, you know, change up my career. And um, I really think, you know, as I get older, um, 
you know, everything I'm doing now is leading me in that direction to one day possibly, you know, I'm building my clientele, I have a very steady um, following and things like that. And the more I do, you know, the more I write like meal plans and eBooks and Zoom classes, I'm gradually over time, you know, setting myself up for, you know, one day I know I'm confident that if I do open my own gym, I wouldn't be successful. So I think it's just, you know, one day at a time and just everything you do should be towards that ultimate goal you have. That's awesome. And with that, I, I kudos to you, right? Of course, you have a, you're in a spot where you love what you're doing, but you're always seeking more. What more can I do to push to my true potential? And I feel like I'm, I'm talking just because I've, I've been reading David Goggins' book. And if you ever read that book, he always talks about pushing your limits to your true potential. At one point in his life, he was very satisfied. And he goes, well, what else can I do? And that's the same what else that just has brought out to you. He's like, okay, I'm established. I have a career. I'm going to get situated. But I feel like my passion can bring more out of me. And I think that's a really good thing to acknowledge. And people need to realize that complacency is the downfall of society once you're complacent in a certain realm you're no longer in that point of success you're in that point of okay now i'm chilling for the rest of your life and some people are okay with that and that's fine that's your thing but i feel like the people i've brought on in the last nine episodes and including today haven't shown us that complacency exists in their life they're always chasing for more and i love that because that's my community everyone that's coming on this podcast is my resources and my community to push you to want more um, and I think that's even just talking to your brother and your, your family and so forth. That's the environment you have created for yourself. And they're never going to let you settle for less, for sure, right? <laughs> Definitely, yeah. I mean, like I said, I just think that goes for everything in life. Even with lifting and, like, since I started my fitness journey, I'm, I'm never satisfied, I feel like. Um, of course, I'm happy with how I look and how I feel and where I'm at. But I just feel like I'm always hungry for more and I'm always, you know, I never want to just like once you get comfortable um i don't know I, I always say like if it doesn't challenge you it doesn't change you so i'm constantly finding new ways to like challenge myself so i can grow as a person and just like become better than i was yesterday that's awesome and with that closing statement from jess we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back with you guys Fun. welcome back everybody so for the last 30 minutes we've had the delight of having jess enlighten us with her life story and a lot of visions a lot of lessons again and i'm going to give jess the floor today and part of the reason why i want her three big tips like we always do is pursuing passion and where we take it from and jess is that is jess when i when i mention her name i think passion because everything that she's doing today has been led by her passion a lot of us don't pursue that or we're afraid of that because of the outcome but Jess, give us your big three on, on what we just talked about. Yeah, so my first big tip would be to establish where you're at in your life now. Um, find out what your, what your main goal is, like where do you want to be? Um, and if it's not, if you're not in, on that direction or in that path, um, what can you change to, to kind of take you one step closer to that goal? So first thing would just be like establishing what you really want out of life or your career or your family, whatever it is, whether it's fitness related or not, like finding that main goal. And what are you doing today that's going to make you closer to it tomorrow? So that would be, you know, thing number one, I would say. Um, the second tip, um, kind of cut out any negativity, you know, um, like I said before, like my, my, how much can you take on? Um, my days are super long. A lot of the stuff I do, I'm like, yeah, I'm exhausted and it sucks um, some days, but when you look back and, you know, the end result is the most, that's what you want that, you know, the end result is the most satisfying thing. So I think once you cut out any negativity and you stop thinking that you can't do it um, and you really just start taking action, you just start taking on more things and you'll see over time what you can and can't handle. Um, and like everything's trial and error. If it's something that you don't feel comfortable doing, don't do it. Um, but you'll never know if you don't try and actually take that next step. Um, and then the last thing I think is just remember why you started. You know, I always look back at how far I come and sometimes I'm like upset with how I look or I'm upset where I'm at. And then I'm like, I look at how far I've come and how much I've grown as a person um, physically and like mentally. Um, I've overcome so many obstacles. So I think just remember why, your why. Um, why you started, why you're doing this, why you want what you want, and um, just get after it, and that'll really set you up for success, I think. That, 
Bravo. You guys are listening, you can't see my class, but there's class in the background. Um, Jess, that was great. And I think I'm going to steal some of that from my closing remarks with you. But overall, like, you can't go wrong with those three steps, right? You can't go wrong with planning. And the, the hardest task a lot of us have doing is getting rid of that negative mind or getting rid of those negative thoughts, those negative comments that are coming in. And especially if you're out in the public the way we are in terms of social media and everything else you see, you're going to get the doubters. You're going to get those people chanting in your ears. But that's why you get coaches to help you. You get coaches along the way to guide you properly and tell you that this is what you're doing. But the key thing that she hit, and no one has yet to hit on it until today, so we hit a new milestone, is the why. Why did you start? Why are you here? Why are you doing this? And I think that's a key success to any coach once you can remind your athletes, your students. And it's, it's not about fitness with that. And those three tips, you can take it to any goal you have in life. It's not even about a fitness goal at this point. If you have a career goal, if you have a goal in your company to have growth, any may be. I think those three tips fall really well in play. Just well done. Um, and I feel like you ask your, your uh, you ask all of your clients why every day, don't you? I do. We're in the middle of a workout and I'm like, remember why you're here. After I make them do like 60 burpees, I'm like, why are you doing this? Remember why you came. Um, and I always say, you know, it's you versus you at the end of the day. It's you, don't do this for me. Don't slack, you know, um, do your best for you don't do it because i'm sitting here telling you to do it do it because you want it and um like you know you signed up for this class for a reason so you know get the most out of it that's awesome and again another lesson she can add that to her tips is do it for you not her um and i think that's what we have to remind ourselves as coaches so for those coaches listening there's a lot of great get examples with her on how she works with her um, clients, her athletes, and her students. And I think those are great lessons to remember is reminding them why. Because your students are going to be the same way. They're going to be like, I'm in high school. I'm a senior. Senioritis kicks in. I don't want to come to class. What's she going to teach me today? Why am I here? But then you pull them back. You bring them back to earth. And especially now with the pandemic and being that virtual aspect, you're like, why are you here today? Where do you want to go in life and so forth? Um, so I feel like you your biggest goal of what makes you the happiest is the positive impact on other people's lives you've made. And I think touching base in this last half hour, you've made not only a positive impact on myself, but all those listening. So I hope viewers, you guys had a great time watching and listening. Um, Jess, I thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It was fun. <laughs> right, absolutely. And you guys will see Jess again. And until next time, guys, we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye. <laughs> oh, you love